Good afternoon, Mark Sutter, HurricaneTrack.com, here with your Hurricane Matthew video discussion for the last day of September, September 30th, 2016. This is the recent satellite animation, visible satellite imagery, showing the Category 3 hurricane moving across the Caribbean Sea. There's the eye. This has rapidly intensified, a lot stronger than was forecast. You know, I mentioned that this was a possibility that I thought that because of what I have seen in the past and the warm waters of the Caribbean Sea, that this would be stronger than was being forecast. I did not think it would be a Cat 3 this early, but this doesn't surprise me at all because intensity forecasting is where there is the least amount of skill, and that's why I thought what I thought. It's not like I'm some genius that figured it out. You just look at the past and you can see when the environment is fairly conducive and there is some shear over the system, so it is surprising, but it has a very well-developed central core here, and it is protected from that shear enough so that it has strengthened now to a Category 3 and could get stronger than that, especially as it approaches Jamaica up in this area, perhaps, uh, because the shear is forecast to relax. There may be other factors that could limit the intensification, but we'll see. So far, Matthew has been an overachiever. So here are the ABC Islands, and this one right here is Aruba. This is where Matthew is currently closest to. And if I zoom in on this just a little bit better, you can see that despite uh, somewhat of a rough overnight period, the hurricane moving away now, really only a few of these bands coming through will remain with some fairly brisk southwest winds, squally conditions, but the core of the hurricane itself, the eye and the eye wall around it, well to the northwest of Aruba and moving away, even though it's moving southwest or west-southwest, it is moving away. So that's good news there for sure. So the forecast track takes this, as you may know by now, fairly close to the eastern tip of Jamaica, and then into eastern Cuba, and then finally up through the central Bahamas as we get into midweek next week. I'm going to show you why I believe this will continue, this track will shift this way just a little bit westward uh, over time, this a little bit more, this just a little bit more, but this perhaps a lot more uh, as we get out into the future. So let's take a look at a few players. This is the upper ocean heat content for the Caribbean Sea, and Matthew is currently located right in here where the upper ocean heat content values are in the middle range, fairly substantial, but it'll be headed towards, as it turns, even higher upper ocean heat content values, which means even warmer water, and even up here on the north coast of Cuba, some of these values in and around the central Bahamas are a little bit higher than perhaps the track it would take. It just depends. It's all a matter of you know different levels of energy and in the end game anything inside this region right here could support theoretically a category 5 hurricane and we need to keep that in mind if the upper environment provides ideal outflow and there's no dry air entrainment because we do have uh, mountains here in Jamaica there's mountain ranges here and mountain ranges here so the potential for drier air to downslope off these mountains and get ingested into the circulation as it comes along and moves up this way is certainly there uh, but if the core stays small enough and protected enough you can have a very intense hurricane over a relatively small area around the core remember that the hundred and uh, what plus mile per hour winds 115 etc whatever the hurricane winds are reported they're not all over the place in the, the hurricane. They're typically confined to just around the eye. And you need to read the public advisory, and it'll tell you how far out from the center the hurricane force winds extend. And we'll talk about that more as this closes in on Jamaica. Now, looking at the wider shot of the tropical cyclone heat potential, uh, very high coming up through the Bahamas and off the southeast coast. So once this turns and comes up through here, we will be paying attention to this very closely. I've been talking about this all season long, and here it is now really starting to matter uh, at, 
at this point where we're looking at a potential major hurricane landfall for the Caribbean islands and then something in the Bahamas certainly to take note of from there. So what I want to do is go through the very latest global forecast system, the GFS. This is the model of choice for me for two reasons. The main reason is I can look at all the different layers free of charge. The European, uh, you got to pay quite a bit of money to look at the high resolution multi layers and that's a large, a large part of how they fund the ECMWF whereas the INSEP uh, model here from NOAA uh, and the National Centers for Environmental Prediction provide this you know, to taxpayers and anybody else in the world for free so might as well take advantage of it and the second reason the GFS to me has been the most consistent overall with the general idea of this turn to the north it's been delaying the turn and pushing it farther to the west so the trend has been west but it certainly has been very consistent and you don't have uh, quite the spread in its overall ensemble guidance either now granted the European model has 51 ensemble members and the GFS only 20 and so yeah you have 31 more to spread over the place uh, in the euro but Anyway, let's look at what we have on the latest GFS. Let me point out what's what. So this is our trough of low pressure in the mid-layers of the atmosphere. The deep layers of the atmosphere kind of eroded away. And so this is kind of like your hole in the atmosphere. And this is the big mountain in the atmosphere right here. A mountain of air, the big old Bermuda High sitting out here. Uh, the different height lines can be thought of like contour lines on a map. And if it had more you know you would see you know more contour lines and this would be kind of like a river running between the two uh, even though this is a mount or a hole um, this is your alleyway right through here for something to escape if it was for example sitting right here but it's not it's down here there's Matthew now this map shows us the shape of the atmosphere roughly looking at these height lines and the vorticity the spin or the energy in the atmosphere and you hear me talk about it a lot if you've been watching my videos these last few years when it's round like that it tells me that it's healthy and when we see that this is the initial condition here uh, at zero hour 12 UTC which was initialized 8 a.m. Eastern Time that shows us that we have a very strong system so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just play press start here and we're gonna run the model through and I want you to watch and see what happens here alright so there we go it moves on along a little bit more of that southwesterly component to it overall very good vorticity signature still moving to the west southwest then it slows down as we get to tomorrow through tomorrow afternoon tomorrow late afternoon to early evening still moving very slow down there in the central south central Caribbean finally it starts to make that move to the north still moving northwest though it's not just this immediate right hand 90 degree angle shot out of the Caribbean and it approaches Jamaica actually starts to move over Jamaica a little bit more unfortunately for them and then right into Cuba here uh, this would be on early Tuesday morning and then finally getting out over the Bahamas here out towards day five into the central Bahamas finally there it is closing in on 120 hours at day five that's where the model stops in this particular analysis I don't want to go past day five I want to stick to basically what the National Hurricane Center track uh, shows and that goes out to day five so let's watch it as it traces the path that I drew as it ran along and I, don't, I wish I could speed it up I can't but just watch what happens if I speed it up it takes the telestration away we'll speed it up after this next run so watch as the different players expand and contract you can see the ridge here expanding and contracting throughout each period and there's this little trough here say little it's significant because if this is weaker then this ridge is stronger and if this energy up here is not there at all or moves out faster or is weaker then this starts to come more and more west with time and could potentially threaten South Florida so let's speed it up just a little bit more 
And watch how things move along here. It's very interesting, the interactions between the different pieces of the atmosphere and the hurricane down there in the Caribbean. Subtle things like that jog right there that took it into Jamaica. Holy, I mean, it really got it in there. W-H-O-L-L-Y, holy into Jamaica. You get the idea. All the way in, so to speak. Looks like it comes real close to Kingston. Right there, kind of jogs in. Those things are important, those wobbles. And then you see the different pieces of energy zipping around. This upper level below moves out. It actually comes up and over and helps to weaken this ridge up here and doesn't allow Matthew to run up the East Coast into the Carolinas in the end game. Sort of gave away the plot, didn't I? Uh, but you see all these different intricate pieces of the puzzle really do matter. And for those that are wondering about what will happen after this period here, the five-day time frame, you got to remember, you know, yeah, it, it does. It comes up real close and then it turns out that position here and here would be days like six, seven, eight, stuff like that. That's a week away. I want you to say that to yourself if you live up here. That is a week away. The average forecast error at day five is significant enough. What do you think it is at day six and seven if it existed, much less day eight? And day eight, GFS has it sitting out here. Day eight. That's just incredible that people, if you see this and say, okay, it's going to go out to sea for those that watch the rest of the run. Um, yeah, you know, it might. Fairly good chance of it. But think about what we're going to, quote, know in 48 hours. We know today that the trend is the farthest west that I have seen with this particular run of the GFS. Uh, what are we going to know in 48 hours? Will this ridge of high pressure bend back a little bit more like that? Uh, will this energy up here not be there? There's a lot of unknowns, and that's why the forecast is uncertain. So for now, we need to be worrying about our friends in Jamaica, possibly even Haiti, and certainly over here in Cuba. And then finally, early next week, uh, interest in the central Bahamas. And then you folks, even in southeast Florida, not out of the woods yet. This is as close as you ever want to see an intense hurricane to these major metropolitan areas along southeast Florida's coast. And this is not over yet. I want to point out one more thing. This is the five-day uh, sort of zoomed-in shot of the GFS that I just showed you. And that right there is the uh, Abaco, Great Abaco Island right in here. And here's a Luther over here. And there is the hurricane just southeast of Great Abaco Island. Okay? The Abacos as a whole. This is where the five-day forecast period from the Hurricane Center from 11 o'clock advisory is. Same time, roughly. Look at that. GFS has it here at five days. You say, well, that's not that big of a deal. But the GFS is west of the official forecast track. So I think, as I go back to what I said in the beginning, that this will start correcting over to the west just a little bit more. Uh, this may be just a hair more. And you folks here in Kingston and elsewhere in Jamaica, certainly eastern Jamaica, need to be getting ready, as this could be rather impactful for you in the coming days. So there you have it. Hey, look, subscribe. At the, what can I say? The response has been fantastic. So subscribe on YouTube if you're watching for future videos. Uh, and, of course, follow us on Hurricane Track at, on Twitter. At Hurricane Track is the handle. And we do have an app that you can follow everything we do, including uh, an update coming out, which will have live video during our field missions. Finally going to put that into the app. Search Hurricane Impact in the App Store and on Google Play, and um, it, you'll everything we do, as soon as I update it, boom, it's in the app. It's an aggregation of all things Hurricane Track. But the added bonus, when we do get landfalls and we're out there, my team and I, there's data that we put into the app from our own instrumented wind towers, video updates that we publish exclusively to the app, as well as live video coming with this next update that we're waiting for Apple to release. It won't be in the Android version yet, but it will be in the iOS. So search. Two words. Hurricane Impact. Subscribe. Like our videos. We appreciate all the feedback and the interaction with people. It makes it so worthwhile to know that this is appreciated. 
and I uh, just wanted to you know, let you know that. So thank you for those of you who are thanking me. All right, that is it for now. I am Mark Suttoth for HurricaneTrack.com. Uh, I will have much more for you with an evening update coming later tonight.